All right. I don't need those. Who am I, Mike Delgadio? Greetings, Earthlings. I'm back with a review of another handheld dynamic mic. So today we're looking at this guy, the Telefunken M81 Universal Dynamic Microphone. And the reason I picked up this over the M80 is because this has a slightly less boosted high end, which is what I prefer. If you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around 250 bucks. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. For this review, the mic's connected directly to the 2i2 second gen with the input dial set at around 3 o'clock. I'm not going to do any post-processing, but I will likely boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I did. Now let's talk about what comes in the tube. First off, everything comes in this really nice padded leather carrying pouch, and of course you're going to get the microphone. And that's actually it, you don't get anything else. So as far as the build quality of this thing, it is absolutely spectacular. It has this really nice machined all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill on the top. And it also has a good amount of weight to it. On the inside of the grill, it does have a good amount of foam as well as an additional foam insert to help more with the plosives. And if you're interested, here's a look at the capsule. As far as the specs, this thing has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 30 hertz to 18 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 60 decibels, an impedance of 250 ohms, and a max SPL of 140 decibels. Now I'm spinning around the microphone to see what the off-axis coloration is, what the actual polar pattern is, what the rear rejection is, and how my voice changes as we move around the microphone's capsule. Now, since this is a handheld dynamic microphone, I am passing it back and forth between my hands to see how it does with handling noise. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to see what kind of proximity effect we can get. About three inches away from the microphone with an external pop filter, and this is how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone. About two feet away from the microphone. And about four feet away from the microphone. <laughs> I ate too much food. I ate so much food. I ate so much that I think I just might die. So with the $250 price tag, this microphone better be pretty dang good. And in my opinion, it is pretty dang good. In terms of pros, this thing just has an incredible build quality. It does a pretty good job with handling noise. The off-axis coloration of this thing is outstanding. There's almost no tonal change all the way around to 90 degrees. It almost sounds the exact same, just a lot quieter. And the rear rejection on this thing is ridiculous as well. And then in terms of cons, this thing is a bit expensive when you compare it to other handheld dynamic microphones. And also it doesn't handle plosives as well as I would expect with all the foam that's inside this thing. Now, as far as the overall sound, this thing does have a slightly recessed midsection due to the cut between 600 and 1200 hertz, but it doesn't give it a V sound or a scooped mid sound, which is amazing. It also has a pretty significant presence boost to help you cut through a mix with a lot of the air frequencies rolled off to help tame some of those shrill higher frequencies, while the lower frequencies are not very prominent, which will be really useful if you're worried about proximity effect and you eat the microphone a lot. So what you're getting with this microphone is a clean, slightly bright tone with plenty of clarity and a good amount of warmth to it. You're also getting a microphone that allows you to utilize the proximity effect without getting overly boomy or muddying up your mixes. So would I recommend this thing? Yeah, I think it's an amazing sounding microphone and I think it would be a great mic to add to your live arsenal. I was personally a big fan of the slightly recessed midsection as well as the decreased proximity effect when compared to the SM58. And as far as other use cases, the company on the package says that this is a great tool for taming brighter vocals and guitar tones and for fattening up percussion horns and thinner sounding sources. So take that for what it's worth.
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. If you want to influence what I review next, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcast. You can cast a vote there. Want more videos? Logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server. Link in the description. And I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.